Hi, and welcome to the course. We are going to start by talking about what responsive design is and why Why do we use it? I mean, <laughs> it's it, for a lot of you, this question has probably already been answered in your mind. You've seen why, what's going on with this type of thing, with working with websites these days. But I wanted to just take a kind of a historical approach to this and just show you some sites and show you examples and show you some different ways we had to work. And in the next video, in the next section, we will talk about the different methods that we can achieve sort of the same goal forever in a day we've had like the new york times out here you've had websites that back in the day i remember i've been coding for a long time probably like 14 years and i remember when we had fixed width sites and everybody was all crazy because wow somebody figured out how to center align the content that was pretty impressive so if you had a bigger monitor the content would stay centered well that was great so we had, you know, desktop browsers and we'd look at this thing. And if we made the browser too small, it would just scroll back and forth, right? Well, then we started getting different smarter phones, I'll say. I'm not going to call them smart. We had like BlackBerry. I had my first BlackBerry years ago and I hated surfing the web because it would strip out a lot of formatting and it would look, it would look horrendous. Then we started getting smartphones. We started getting, well, let's say like the iPhone and others. And you started looking at sites like this and realizing, well, it's not quite working. What do I mean by working? Well, it, it works. You can see things. But for instance, if I go over to my, my iPad and take a look at it, and this is the same site in the iPad. The New York Times, by the way, is not currently not responsive, which means it doesn't adapt to the device you're looking at. It adapt to what's called the viewport. We'll talk all about that. Essentially, what happens on a different device is the New York Times will just scale. And I'm looking at this on, now this device is actually looks bigger on my screen here than I, it is. It's an iPad mini, so it's relatively small. So as I'm looking at the New York Times, everything just gets shrunk. That's the idea. That's how, that's how a lot of mobile browsers used to cheat. They would just take the site and make it smaller so you could get the whole thing. Like on BlackBerry, way back in the day, I'm talking early, early on, you'd have to scroll the site left to right, top to bottom in some cases. Now, if I go look at this on my phone, and this is this is really this is a fake phone, obviously. This is what's called an iOS simulator. You can kind of test things out. But th this is bigger than my phone, obviously. But even on my on my phone, it's going to be even smaller. So it's going to be hard to see things. So a lot of times what we wind up doing is we wind up pinching and zooming and trying to click on something or tap on something rather. And that's a big, big difference between mobile and desktop. We're not clicking, we're tapping. But but it becomes hard to, to find things and tap on the right thing and becomes difficult. So people started realizing, well, we can't do this. If, if, if the web is going mobile, which is what it did several years back, it started going towards mobile, where a lot more people were looking at it on a mobile device, then we have to make the sites work on those. So a lot of people started brainstorming. They're like, okay, well, how can we do this? Well, responsive design was one example or one method for, uh, for getting things to work and look better. For instance, if I go to, and this is going to be one of the bigger examples you're going to find. Uh, this is the, the Boston Globe. Let me, uh, let me refresh this, and hopefully that advertisement will go away for a second. I appreciate their need to make money. But you'll see the Boston Globe is what's referred to as a responsive site. Now, you'll notice that if you grab, and this is what a lot of us will do, we'll go to a browser and we'll grab a corner or a side and just start resizing. And you'll start to see things responding to the size of the browser window or other things here. So you'll see that eventually what's going to happen here is it's going to get kind of small. This is a fully responsive site, you'll see, because it's using styling and different methods to get things to respond to the viewport size, respond to the, we'll call it the browser window size, okay, the area it shows in. If we go to look at that on a different device, for instance, let me say I go over to my, uh, my iPad or something like that, and I've got a bunch of bookmarks saved, not a bunch here, but this is actually iOS 7, which at the time of release of these videos is new. Let me go to, whoops, I just went to New York Times. I'm going to go to Boston Globe here. So there we go. You can see that it's there. And in the device, this is an iPad. It's actually an iPad mini. It looks great. It really does. And that's because, like I said before, it's responding to the viewport. Let me collapse this. So if I were to make my actual browser narrow enough you would see just about the same thing as you see on the device. You can see right there, something like that. So this is a responsive site, it's responding. 
Now, there are a lot of other ways that we can get this done, and there's a lot of examples out there that you can look at. There's a, a billion these days. There used to be only a handful, and we all clambered to go see them, and this is one of them, which was kind of a, a test case, if you will. It's called responsivewebdesign.com slash robot, and you can see here that if I grab the corner or the side of the browser and respond, you'll see what's happening. And we're going to discuss all about how all this stuff works. You're going to see the images are actually being cut off, cropped. You can see right there. There's a lot of things going on. We'll also talk about things called breakpoints and mini minor breakpoints break or mini breakpoints and different things like that. Um, so there's a lot of ways to get this stuff done. Um, we all typically, when we do start this process, when we start making what's called a responsive website, we start it just about the same way we used to. We start with HTML. So we create a bunch of content that's marked up with like, let's say a paragraph tag or a div or some of the new HTML5 tags, things like that. But it's the styling a lot of times or the scripting or both that makes the things change, that makes things respond. On the New York Times site, when, we, when this is created, we create what's called a static width site. That means that it pretty much stays the width that it is. So it's like 960, 980, 1000, whatever. And as we change the browser size or we go to a different device, it's either going to be cut off or it's just going to scale the whole thing. The whole thing's going to be scaled. On a, a site like this, like Robot or Not, we are using a little different method. We're actually, instead of creating static width objects, we're creating relative width objects. We're creating things that are based on percent and M and all these different units that we can use and even pixel in some cases. So there, there's a lot of things going on here, but I just wanted to introduce you to what a responsive design site was. In the next section, we are gonna take a look at the different methods we can use from adaptive design to responsive design to a completely different mobile site to, there's five million methods for doing this. And I wanna boil it down to like the top three or four. So that's what we'll do next.